This week on the bonus round, we're at the 2015 Game Developers Conference in San Francisco, talking about what Valve and Epic Games are doing at GDC. I'm with Kotaku's Steven Cotillo, GameSpot's Danny O'Dwyer, and Greg Miller from Kinda Funny Games. Hey guys, welcome back to the bonus round here on GT from GDC. I'm here with Steven Cotillo, Danny O'Dwyer, and Greg Miller. And this week we are going to talk about two companies uh, that you've probably played their games over the years, Valve and Epic. They are here at GDC. Not necessarily talking about their big new blockbuster games, but talking about uh, Steam Machines, talking about Unreal Engine. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, GDC is a place for game developers to come and decide which engine you want to use. Um, some big news here, I guess, that uh, uh, the Unreal Engine is going to be free. They want 5% royalty on the back mm -hmm. end. The new Ste uh, Source 2 engine from Valve, that's going to be completely free, although Valve obviously will make money if you sell your game on mm -hmm. Steam. Um, the idea of these tools becoming free. Seems like a natural sort of trend in, in technology, but Danny, what's your take on you know the fact that these these engines are now free for developers? I think this is a direct reaction to what Unity has done to this space. Yeah. Like uh, Epic last year when they announced the, the the sort of the subscription plan they had with UE, yeah. it was I think the the buy-in was like twenty five percent of the game's yeah. uh, profits, but it was at the stage when it sold fifty thousand. Yeah. So now they've brought it down to five percent, but I think it occurs five thousand or three thousand. Uh, five percent, yeah, within three thousand. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So like clearly they're looking. At at the indie market, they're looking yep. at like getting a, a catch on that mm -hmm. quicker. Um, game development used to be like this, you know, this boys' club of like you needed to have teams and you needed to have connections and you needed to to have deals in place to be able to get access yeah. to these like top level engines, which solve a lot of logistical problems for developers with small teams yep. who can't build this sort of stuff. So I think because, uh, as Stephen was saying um, earlier, that a lot of, there's a lot more indie games getting created now than there are big AAA games, and really they have to, engine manufacturers have to make sure that they have folks making on, you know, they have to go for the market that's there. So that's why I think they're basically like going straight for the indie scene. Yeah, and also, you know, I remember the, the old days where Epic would be, you know, charging millions of dollars, people to get mm. their engines, the big games, you're right. Now it's like indie developers, they're happy to get a little bit of a cut. Um, Greg, when you look at those engines, I mean, over the years it used to be like, oh, it's clear this is an Unreal game. And you can yeah. sort of tell what engine it's with. I think Unity now, it's like, it sort of seems every game is kind of built on Unity, little Unreal, yeah. Source I don't think is really used that much mm. um, right now, at least in the indie scene, or even mainstream, but maybe Source 2 will be like that. Sure. Um, you think, is that a good thing that there's sort of these engines are so accessible now that yeah, you don't have to think about reinventing the wheel? This is a great thing. I can't. I, I thought it was great news, especially with what we're talking about, right? Like, there used to be that mid-tier market, your THQs, these games that came out and did this kind of thing, and they have fallen away. Yep. And so you either get, you get your AAAs, once or twice, three times a year now, and then everything else is indie. So like these companies have to react and give these up and coming developers the chance to get out there and make amazing stuff. But then they're the big companies like the Valves and the Epics that have kind of unlimited capitalization, right. can, can make those big blockbuster games, and but they choose not to, No, <laughs> no they're not. <laughs> Uh, Half-Life 3, still not announced. I love the theory, though. That, so yeah. Valve was doing a presentation three on 3 o'clock on March 3rd. So 3-3-3. Surely. Half-Life 3. Surely they did Didn't happen? Did you have a reporter there? No. no. Uh, I don't actually. I don't think we had anybody there, but uh, we, we ran a debunker post earlier yeah. in the day because mm -hmm. Doug Lombardi, a right. wonderful man at Valve, responded to an email. It was okay. very exciting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, said, don't expect that. What do you say? He lowered expectations. Okay. But, uh, but they, you know, this is what Valve does right now, right? They yeah. they uh, they rake in the profits from Team Fortress hats and uh, Dota <laughs> skins and what have you. Um, but they're about you know their free engine goes with the fact that they they you know they focus on free games and yeah. you know sort of moving the price down for everybody, but. It's hard to fathom Valve ever making Portal 3 or Half-Life 3 at this mm. point. It, right. it just doesn't seem like what they're interested in. Which is too bad if you're a fan of what they did for the creative part of just, video games. Just don't say that. Don't say those kind of things. Like, I, I hold out hope for all those threes. Mm. <laughs> I want all those three you games. Gotta, wait until you play the Portal VR. Uh, See, and that's yeah. the thing. That's the, the, when they announced the VR stuff this week, yeah. I was like, someone, someone was talking on Twitter of just the fact that, like, they, Valve seems like the kind of company that wants to be game changers, right? Yep. Maybe yep. this is it. Maybe this is what they've been waiting yeah. for. Maybe this is Half-Life. Yeah. Greg, I have bad news for you. No, couple, please, no, I can't take ago, anymore. A couple of years ago, I ran into Gabe Newell at the green room for uh, yes, your, the awards show. Yes. Yeah, and I, I was talking to him, and he wound up saying something, and it was a little confusing to me. I think Gabe was working on another level than I was at that point with what he was explaining. But he's basically trying to tell me that uh, if five years ago you had told him that Half-Life 3 and Kotaku were the same thing, he would have laughed, of course. And he said, now, he's like, Stephen, what you do and what we would do would be the same. 
and I didn't really understand it, but I, the sense of what I got he, that he meant was the community that community can just make the game. The community that right. he sees Kotaku, our site is very much about like a post and then comments below mm, it. Sure. That, that it's very much defined by the community below it. Yeah. Uh, so maybe Half-Life 3 will be some crowdsourced project oh. made by fans someday or something oh, like that. It was by that no sounds means. terrifying. And, and, Here's it, the engine, here are the assets, <laughs> have fun. Just do it. You <laughs> want it, <laughs> make it. Make no, it yourself. Even, uh, here's a here's a cooking demo. Start with that. <laughs> oh, well, but I, even when I was talking to Valve a few weeks ago, it's like they're saying now, even like with a lot of the hardware stuff, they're trying to build this like prototype lab where fans can literally like come up with hardware designs <laughs> exactly. and Valve will make them for them. And it's like, yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing. It's, there's a charm to that, but there's also something about, you know, the production quality of like what you get from an amazing Valve game or what Epic would do with Gears of War that I think a lot of us miss, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. like those were highlight moments. And even now Epic, you look at them like, I guess they're doing Fortnite and some kind of, you know, alpha version and that may grow into something. Right. And they sold off Gears of War. Right. It doesn't seem like they have any interest in doing sort of that big blockbuster AAA game. And here are two studios that were known for operating at the high end and have right. literally just decided I don't think they want to play that game right now. No, I mean, they made a ton of money making Infinity Blade, which yeah. was, yeah. you know, one of the best looking iPad games at the time. And yeah. I believe that game existed more for them to show off what Unreal Engine could yeah. do on tablets yep. and phones than it did to say, this is this creative idea that we really want to make, which is too bad. Um, but, you know, there are lots of great games being made. They just come from different places. and. I don't really know what we can do other than just you, hope maybe... Kotaku can make Half-Life 3. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounded yeah, like Nobody awesome. wants that. No one That's wants what's that. That's what's happening at the Gotham No, no one <laughs> wants that. That would be amazing to see Kotaku make a game. They were on Kotaku Kotaku project. Project. Exactly. We're, we're doing it. <laughs> but that's, that's the problem, I guess, the, the worrying thing whenever you see games coming out of these studios now. Like, Fortnite to me seems like, oh, you just want us to see right. UE. Or like, Unreal Tournament, what they're doing with that is very and, much a, hey, look what, what you can yeah. do with our tool set. Yep. And like, you maybe see the same thing about like Crytek, for instance. Uh -huh. Like they try and sell their engine, and for a long time, like Crisis always seemed like, hey, this is what games can look like. Look at how yeah. beautiful this game yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. It's not that much it. fun to play. Well, yeah. just look, yeah, just yeah, shoot the know. trees; they yeah. fall yeah. over. It's amazing. <laughs> part of part of what changed is that, for particularly for Epic, their clients used to be the other big publishers. Yes, sure. yes. But those publishers mostly are making their own engines. Yeah. So yeah. EA doesn't really use anybody else's engines that much anymore. I don't think mm -hmm. they used Unreal relatively recently, maybe for part of Medal of Honor or something. Yeah, they've used it, but, but like they've, they've moved yeah. away from it. Yeah. Ubisoft mostly uses their own engines. Mm -hmm. yep. I think Warner Brothers is still one of the few studios right, to Batman use it significantly. So these companies whose business was, let's sell this engine to these really rich publishers, now are selling the engine, obviously at much lower prices, mm -hmm. like free, to indie developers, because yeah. that's who their customers are. And that's yeah. clearly what ultimately their business is. Their business wasn't necessarily to just make great games, but to sell technology. And who yeah. do you sell it to? The people making games, mm -hmm. that's mostly the indies. Right. That's just but but do, you get, do, you, do you miss sort of some of those big games? And we talk about, you know, like, Valve not doing those sort of big blush single player games. I mean, you, is that stuff that well, you yeah, feel that's should a happen? loaded question there. Yeah, I miss the Valve games, sure, okay. but that mid tier that's fallen away. No, I don't sit around going, man, where is Dark Sector Two? <laughs> man, do I? You know what I mean? Like that's just not what it's. It, it, the, right now, this is the best part of like getting the tools to these indies to make all these games. It's why the App Store has been so crazy mm -hmm. and why it's exploded the way it did. Right? All right, for ninety nine dollars, you're a game developer. Go make content. And sure, a lot of it's garbage, but then you get amazing stuff that wouldn't have happened any other way. But I do feel like even this year you look at it, like there's a lot of times where I'm like, oh, I want to play a great big game, and there's just nothing coming out, right? I mean, it's like you look at like the well, first half of this year. I, mean, I think it depends on your perspective. I mean, what's mid-tier? Do you consider Bayonetta mid-tier? Which, I mean, oh, there, there's a, Get yeah, the yeah, farm yeah. thread ready for that. No, so. I, <laughs> another <laughs> load of questions. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I think, I think it's pretty obvious without Nintendo, yeah. Right, when Nintendo stepped in, it was like, all right, Bayonetta 2 will make that happen, right? They were responding to fan demands and then putting it out and making their own kind of waves right. there. Right, I think, think or, or Wolfenstein. I mean, it's uh, mm. clearly it costs a lot of money mm. for Bethesda to make that game. It's uh, clearly very high production values and fun, but I wouldn't say that's at the same level of hype and attention and oh, system sure. selling, sure, sure, say, sure, sure, sure. Grand Theft Auto yeah, or a flagship called Duty. It's the same about Dying like Light and yeah. Yeah. Evolve and maybe even The Order, even though oh, yeah. it was a big first party game. Sure. Like, yeah. these weren't, you know, I think there are, yeah, there are mid tier games there, but in terms of looking for that one game to play, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've been enjoying the last several weeks of smaller games catching my attention. I mean, Helldivers is made yes. by Arrowhead. Oh, it's I fantastic. Yes. Yeah, Helldivers. I'm a little sick, I, Greg, but now, I don't now care. you have now my, I, my Helldivers I want your Helldivers too. Yeah. <laughs> um, Helldivers is like a strategic Diablo, like slower paced Diablo, yeah. and it's really cool. And the credit list, when I scroll through, I'm used to finishing Assassin's Creed and right, watching the credits yeah. for Go make a cup of coffee, come back, I'm halfway You can there. hold your breath during the time the credits right. roll on, on Helldivers, and yet it feels like a game I could play for ages. Yeah. And so there are things to play, but in terms of can I get lost in a huge open world? Yeah, fewer and further between. Mm. 
It's just what happens. All right, so as we look then at GDC, the engines here, what's happening, is it a good time, do you think, to be an indie developer? It seems like right now, I mean, with you know, the engines being you know, reduced in cost and mm. things like that, there's really no barriers to entry anymore. I think the engine cost is one thing. I think the fact that now being an indie isn't just this tiny little right. like hardcore gamer world or like p people who are like massive enthusiasts. It, that's now becoming the way to play games on your consoles. Like I think about the games that I played on my Xbox One or PlayStation 4 in 2014 right. and most of them were like I was surviving on picking up indie titles the whole way through. Well, the thing is there's there's so many, and even when I go on to Steam, there's things like I had no idea this game even existed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I found like on the weekend, I was like, there's this like bread simulator game where you're yeah. piecing bread. Yeah. I am bread. Like, <laughs> sort of, I'm just like, I didn't know this, and there's just like there's so much. I feel there's like this, there's just huge discovery problems. Yeah. It's like even when we go to E3 and we do the E3 awards, it's like now there's this massive list of all the indie games getting nominated. You can't be right. an expert anymore. You can't yeah. know everything. Yeah. I felt like when, you know when I started in like 2007, 2008 uh, in, at IGN, you could touch everything. Right. I could have exactly. a I could know a little bit about every game, and now I just give up. Like whatever. I'll see what I see and I'll be trying to be an expert at that. Mm. And there was a talk earlier this week at GDC where I think they were talking about the the, the, the sales potential. I on, saw that on each platform, right? Yeah. 30,000, 50,000, 200,000 if you're an indie. And then I think also it might have been Pocket Gamer put out an article where they counted how many games came out on iOS uh -huh. yeah. in one month. It was 11,000 games <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, you go on Steam, there's so many games coming out. It's very hard to keep track. Um, Thankfully, the gaming media is here to keep you informed <laughs> <laughs> the best we can, but it's, it's very difficult to keep up. Um, but it is, if you are a person who has an interesting idea for a game, it is probably easier for you to try to make that, which goes back to the early era of gaming where you could yep. just make a game with your friend in a, in, in a garage somewhere. Now there's more tools for more people to do that, which is great, yep. ultimately. We get a more interesting set of games coming out. It's just hard to find them all because there's just so many. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, we'll be back next week with more right here in the bonus round.